We're here today with Matt Fry from AHW. You're the new inventory manager at AHW. So Matt's come over here today with a grueling task that I've given him. We're going to talk about something that well, it's just a challenge to talk about. We're gonna talk about how to adjust this auto connect deck on the one series so that you can connect it reliably every time. Now, I've said often that I don't really have that much trouble with the auto connect deck once I adjusted it and once I kind of learned how to do some of the adjustments. So I was hoping maybe you, Matt, could help us. Yeah, um, I think we can share some tips today that I've learned over the years with the auto connect deck to make attaching and detaching um, a lot easier for, for you and your viewers. Okay. Now, the first thing I would say is we are on a concrete floor. That's not the best way to do this. But we're wanting to make it a challenge for ourselves, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> I can tell you some tricks, um, some tips to make it easier on your slick concrete floor as well. How would you, how would you do that? Um, what I tell all my customers um, is if they're going to do it on a, a slick concrete floor, go somewhere, go to an auto parts store, go to, go to your major box retailer and get you some cheap, car floor mats, the rubber floor mats, and throw those floor mats down underneath the edge of the deck before you lower that deck completely to the ground, and that'll help keep it from sliding around. Yeah, I've heard other people say something like a horse stall mat, something yeah. like any, yep. anything yep. rubber that, that won't allow it to slide. Yep. yep, you want to keep it from sliding around. You'll probably see as we do some of the demonstrations here, you'll see the deck slide a little bit, and sometimes that can, can cause some challenge. So we're not going to have it on rubber, but it would be nice if it were. Yep. So Matt, from my understanding, there's really three areas that we need to adjust. Can you just hit these at an overview? Yeah, on the Auto Connect deck, there's three places that are critical to making this attach properly to your tractor. The first one would be the, the height of this lift link here. Um, this lift link, when the deck is completely on the ground, needs to be about 11.4, just under 11 and a half inches from the ground to the center of that pin. Okay. And then there's the adjustment of the of the crossbar on the lift length to the hooks on the tractor. Um, you want to see a two to three millimeter gap when the tractor is attached so the tractor isn't pushing the deck. Um, it's actually latching from the back and leaving a gap to the front. Okay. And then the other um, critical adjustment point on this is the angle of the PTO connector under the tractor so it lines up perfectly with the splines on the gearbox. Okay, three points. Let's get started. Okay. So Matt, this spring back here holds holds it, this up. It holds that up in the position so it's ready to attach to the tractor. And there's a bolt here that limits the amount of height you can get out of this lift link. Yeah, um, now this doesn't really move that gracefully, right? It, I mean, it doesn't, no. It sometimes only goes down to there and then I kind of have to give it a yank. That spring isn't always strong enough to pull that up in the latching position. One other tip you can, um, we can share is before you go to put your deck on your, on your tractor, give that a little bit of a kick or raise it up so it's, so it's all the way at its, its locked height. The locked height that you want is uh, you know roughly 11 and a, just under 11 and a half inches from the floor to the center of that pin and okay and Tim yours isn't too far off I'm below not 11 much, not much out of adjustment low. but I I would say the symptom is is if this is too low those front you might say fork connectors will go above this thing and push yeah, it down yep. they need to come in like this they need and, to come and in it. and lift it up and so when you're driving in you can actually see that from the tractor if when you're driving in if if this goes if this fork on the quick connector there doesn't fit, then you're going to have to raise this a little higher. You are. You are. But 11 and a half inches, it looks like even when I give it a, a good yank, I'm below 11. Yeah, yeah that's 10 yeah. and a half or something. You're, so You're below. Um, you know, a, another problem that we see a lot is people lifting these mower decks. They'll, they'll get underneath here and lift it up with their, with their forks on their tractor or their have, loader. And it, have you been watching my old videos? Maybe. Um, Uh-oh. I did, uh, and what happens is, is you'll either bend that bolt back there. Yep. Yep. Um, or you'll actually bend the deck in a little bit if yeah. you get it swinging just yep, right. I, I would grab this with a single fork and pick it up. I thought, hey, that's handy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend that. There's a nice alternative now, and it's a little bit bright yellow. Yeah, load and goes. Load and goes will eliminate uh, the issue of ever bending this uh, by lifting. Yeah, the load and goes right now are available for the 60D deck. 60D. You've seen our example of the load and go. They're available at greenpartstore.com slash TTWT. I think they're $250. Mm -hmm. They're incredibly worth it. You just yep. put your loader right in there and pick up your deck. In fact, that's how I got this deck set in here this morning. It's uh, great for storage, great for moving and lifting it up and cleaning it out from underneath it, sharpening your blades. 
It's it's yep. great. Okay, yep. so we need to shorten this bolt a little shorten bit. Shorten that bolt a little bit there, Tim. Yeah, I'll loosen up that chain nut. I may need another wrench. You're gonna shorten that bolt to get more lift height. So Matt, this front adjustment here, this bar back and forward, how does that need to be adjusted? So the proper adjustment for that bar um, is you want to see a, a two to three millimeter gap. I tell people an eighth of an inch um, right here between the pin and the back side of this hook. You want a gap there. Um, when the deck is all the way the, to the ground, you want to see daylight through here. So the tractor isn't pushing on this. It's actually latching at the back latch points um, and leaving a gap here. So if the, if the symptom, if you're having trouble with this, is the mower will not latch. It won't latch in the back. If this is too tight, the mower won't latch in the back. Right, and that makes perfect sense because, well, it just can't go back far yeah. enough to latch. So I've seen people um, over the years, this will be too tight and they'll pull up real, real tight to the tractor and they'll have to get off the tractor and they'll have to, to kick backwards on the mower deck. Mm -hmm. and, and by having the proper adjustment here, it'll take care of that issue. Matt, I've been guilty of just leaving plenty of gap here. I really want that thing to latch every time I get on. So yep, I leave yep. I leave maybe a little too much gap here. What, what kind of symptoms am I gonna cause with that? So when you go to lift the mower deck, um, it might not lift high enough in the front um, if this isn't properly adjusted. Um, another thing that you could see over time is you could pro possibly see some wear on the back hooks. Oh, okay. Um, by, by having this too loose, it would be uh, oh, okay. wearing too much on the back side. And I believe I do see that. The front of my mower doesn't pick up quite as much as the back Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I pick it up. You guys have to decide, uh, as a viewer, you have to decide how you want it. To me, I, I like having plenty of gap there because I want it to hook up every single time. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a way you can fine tune it. You could make that even closer. I mean, I suppose if it were almost tight, as long as it still works, yeah. that would get your max lift so height. So another, another function of this piece up here is also the front to back leveling of your mower deck. So it's kind of a fine line to where you have the right gap, but your mower deck is also in proper adjustment front to back. Um, and, and right here's how we do that, the front to back adjustment. Okay. So I would say I probably need to tighten that up a little bit, but I may just leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say either way on this one, Tim, um, you would, you'd be fine. Crank me up. Now, Matt, I have some trouble sometimes getting this PTO mechanism here to slide into the deck piece yep, of the PTO. Yep. Any, any thoughts on that? I don't think the manual really addresses this much. It really doesn't, and if it does, it's not real clear. You want this to be level or slightly tipped forward. I would recommend the slightly tip forward so yeah. it can line up and, and slide onto that coupler. Yeah, I've noticed my bolt is bent here a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's pretty common to see that bolt bent. I think this is one of the weaker areas right here of the, of the mechanism. One reason is, is when it's not connected, it gets caught up and stuff. It can get uh, caught up and stuff. Especially if, if you forget to lock up your mechanism. But that bolt is a, uh, is a pretty cheap sacrificial point there um, that if you would catch something, that bolt's usually gonna break away first. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna be a cheaper fix for you than having to replace the whole housing. Yeah. Matt, you need to get your team one of these turf rail challenger Yeah, this is really, this is really nice. I, I want one in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't see that. You know, happening. I never knew that I wanted one. Yeah. I mean, now that I've got it, I, we use it all the time. It wasn't even something that was on my list, really. And uh, one of our viewers contacted us and said, hey, I know you need one of these. And I'm like, I do? And he said, yeah, you've got to have one of these. So they brought it out and they installed it. And I'm using it all the time now. Yeah. So we want this headed just a little bit downward. I think it is now. Maybe a little too much, something like that. Yeah, that's, that's, about, that's probably about right. I'll shake it up and down a time or two. Yeah. It's tipped just slightly forward. What I notice is that as I'm driving forward, I might catch up front on those front hooks, and then I might catch on these, but a little bit later, it might bind here where the two shafts don't, the two connections don't line up. Mm -hmm. they, it starts to go on, and then it yeah. kind of yeah. binds like that. Yeah. And I think by having this, once it starts to pick up, it lines up better. And there's another thing that we've talked about this morning too, Tim, and I don't know really what the what the proper um, procedure is. I see you've got grease here in your in your coupler and grease on the splines. 
Um, I think that's all right, but grease can also attract dust and debris, and that could cause issue. So um, that's one thing just to just to, to point out is to make sure that this is clean and free of debris. Uh, because that'll let that coupler slide together. Constantly. Yeah, I mean, I, you're right. I put grease in mine, and I'm not sure I'm recommending that. I felt like it wasn't sliding on nice enough, so I put grease on it. But I'm afraid that over time, uh, when this is unhooked, it's going to yeah. get grimy and, and actually drier and not as, look well. As many jobs that you do with this tractor without the mower deck on it, I, I think you're going to see that this, with grease in it, is going gonna, is gonna to fill with debris. Yeah. So, so, for the viewers, I mean, just... Use your own discretion on that. The, yeah. the book doesn't seem to say anything about grease. I came up with that idea on my own. And so I, I think you're probably right, but but keep track of that. Yeah, just watch to make sure it's clean. While we're under here, we ought to talk about the side to side leveling a little bit. Side to side and then getting the most lift height out of your deck um, okay. while we're under here. So your side to side leveling on your mower deck are actually done with these, these turnbuckles here on each side. Um, you'll pull this, this pin pull this pin, lower it down, and then turn the turnbuckle on that bolt. Tim, you've got yours um, tightened up all the way here to get the most lift height out of yeah. your deck. Yeah. Um, and that's that's great. That gets you more lift height underneath your deck, but um, it'll limit some of your side-to-side um, -side leveling adjustability when you get this tight. Right here um, with this apparatus is where you will do your side-to-side -side leveling on each side. So that's how I started. I cranked them all the way to the top. And then for side to side, I, I said, well, do I need to lower one of them? And yeah. in my case, it was, when I cranked them all the way tight, it was, it was perfect. Um, and it should be from the, from the factory, probably the only time, in the, you know, is if you'd happen to bend this a little bit or. It, it should be, and, and different dealers, and depending on the age of your, your 1025 or 1026 or 1023E, um, this is coming from the factory, factory installed now. Um, but a few years back, this all had to be, the lift mechanism for the mower deck had to be installed by the dealer. Okay. And uh, you know, every, every technician's a little different on how they set things up. So you might get a new, a new tractor with more, more threads showing here um, than what you've got. And that's, that's an adjustment that you can make to get more lift height. Another point that I wanted to make while we were under the tractor here is uh, new paint. Brand new paint, brand new tractor can cause some problems with the attaching and unattaching of your of your mower deck. Um, I've seen paint runs on these pins here um, cause issues with latching. That's one thing to check. Um, over time, they'll wear off. But if you've got a brand new tractor and you're struggling in places, you can look for a paint run here. You can look for excess paint on your on your front hooks. Yeah, and then sometimes right on the side here, it doesn't slide in very well. Yeah, a little a little emery cloth um, will clean up some paint runs and smooth thing smooth things up, wear it in to uh, to make things attach easier. And again, I tried some grease out there. That just, didn't go so just, well. Just dirty now. Yeah, it's just it didn't. Dirty now. It didn't. Uh, it didn't do the job there. I thought maybe that might help too, but no, I don't think that's the right answer. I don't really have any problem with this in the long run sliding on there as long as I'm centered when I, when I go yep. on. That's something I need yep. to check. Okay, so I'm ready to drive on, Matt. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your tractor's in four-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. If that's on, um, and then you're going to And drive. if I don't, it just it just scoots it'll, it'll it. just want to push the mower deck. Yeah, you'll be clear across the shed before you ever. Uh, then you'll have to drag the mower deck back and mm -hmm. have all kinds of problems. The w first thing you need to do is take the outside of this tire when you're driving up here and keep it right on the edge of this rail. Um, that lines you up as you're going over the mower deck and keeps you lined up so your front attaching parts and your rear attaching parts and your PTO will all line up correctly. I've watched you do this a couple times this morning and I've noticed that you you go over pretty easy and then when you get to the other side of the mower deck you, you tend to want to go into your your latching real easy. And so I don't want to tear it up. Well that'll cause more problems in some cases. When you get close goose it a little bit. Don't be afraid to hit it. I mean, Is that in the to, manual? You need to bump goose it. it. No. <laughs> no, it's not, but people tend to want to be a little too easy on it. You've got to, you've got to hit it. And you, if you hit it a little hard, once you get over, it'll, it'll click in. It'll, it'll click in easier. Yep. It'll attach easier. And I have seen that. You're yeah. exactly right. Yep. Okay.
same thing with backing off. I have to do a little bit of it. Especially when you're on slick concrete, the deck wants to move. Yeah, it seems to me like, Matt, that gusset concept is right there after I've hit the ground. Mm -hmm. And really it's to help that PTO shaft. Yeah, that's really your limiting factor there is that PTO shaft. You need a little force to make those lines align if they've got out of adjustment over the time that you've been detached from the, from the mower deck. Yeah, and it seems like I need to do maybe the same thing when I'm unhooking. Just yeah. a little bit of a, a gusset, as yeah. you say. Yeah, gusset. I like that. Gusset. Yep. Matt, I think we've got it working pretty well. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's working pretty smoothly now. I think I learned a few things that weren't even mechanical, right? Gusset. That's the number one thing there. Yep. And don't forget on the smooth concrete to get you some, some cheap rubber floor mats to throw between the deck and the concrete. Yeah. That'll really help. Yeah, yeah, that's skidding around. It, it can also get it kind of sideways at times and then you're, yeah. then you're way off. Looks to me like one other thing I'm gonna have to do is get my original cab off. Spring is time. here. Hey, you can get your original cab at originalcab.com. Coupon code TTWT gets you 5% off. I really like this cab. Yeah, these are, these are great for the uh, 1025 owner or sm small subcompact owner that, that really doesn't need the, the full-fledged cab with the, with the heat and the air conditioning. Um, it's, just, it's, a, it's a good option to keep you out of the elements. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively inexpensive compared to the Mauser cab that, that, yeah. that comes factory. And I don't really want a cab on this little tractor year-round. No, no. It's, so, it's much easier to get on and off without a cab. But boy, during those uh, snowy days in the winter, it was kind of nice. We sell a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Matt. You're welcome. This was very helpful. People have been asking for this for a long time. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Maybe we can even get Matt to come into the comments and help us try to answer some of those. And folks, we appreciate you watching. Matt, we really appreciate not only you coming over to help us today with this. This was something that really needed to be yeah. done. We really needed to show up. But we also appreciate what you guys at AHW have done for us. I mean, you've just been a great partner for us. and. Uh, I, I, I really appreciate that. I want to say that to yeah. you and, and to and all you of for our... us. You've been, you've been great to work with. So I really enjoy that. Hey, folks, I thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. I wasn't sure he was going to do it. <laughs>